Well, I think the, the story of Delft Hyperloop is extremely inspiring. Of course, it all started with this vision uh, of Elon Musk and a competition in Los Angeles being a first team, setting themselves up for an extremely big challenge. Kept on moving forward for the seven years ahead and now we're already at the eighth Hyperloop team. And I think we can learn a lot from the challenges they've overcome and we're also building up the legacy uh, of Delft Hyperloop. I'm uh, Jem Seligbos, the team captain of uh, DHO8. So I am Tim and I was the team captain of the first Delft Hyperloop team. But when I first heard about Hyperloop, it was in 2012, when I was part of Formula Student Team Delft, that is building electric race cars. When we heard about Hyperloop, we already said to each other that it would be really cool if there would come something like a Hyperloop competition. And then in 2015, this was announced by Elon Musk. We were still in a WhatsApp group with each other of the former uh, Formula Student Team members. Uh, and then one of the guys, who is also uh, uh, one of the co-founders of Delft Hyperloop, he said, well guys, let's drop our studies again to now set up a team to try to win this competition. And that then all uh, came to life and one week later we were already sitting together to yeah, brainstorm about what kind of team is required, what should the planning look like, uh, how should we approach it, how should we gather a team to get this done. And um, that's basically when the ball started rolling. And um, the Alta Eiffel loop was officially set up to participate in the Hyperloop competition. So my name is Edward Schneiders, and I'm the team captain of Delft Hyperloop 2. My name is Rineke van Noort, and I was team captain of Delft Hyperloop 03. So I'm Emma van der Ven, I was the team captain of Delft Hyperloop 04. Uh, my name is Peter Becking, team captain of the fifth Delft Hyperloop. My name is Patrick Sheppers, and I was the team captain of DH06. I am Umika Bagole, and I'm the team captain of Delft Hyperloop 7. Uh, you guys went to Los Angeles for the Hyperloop X competition. Yeah. Uh, can you, can you walk me through that? You have to ship everything over to LA. Well, to go there was very stressful because we had to get all of our equipment over there, including our batteries. And they're quite strict about what they do or do not let onto planes and in the country. Out of the 25 teams that are actually allowed to go to the, to the competition at SpaceX, only three actually able to run their pod in the tube and pass all the tests. Um, so yeah, that itself is a, is a really big challenge. So getting that far, we were really proud and yeah, we were able to run our pod and uh, had the second fastest speed. Uh, while we were in LA, we were so focused on doing the competition and getting through scrutineering. Uh, so the competition day itself, when everything finally fell into place, it was amazing to see. And um, that Elon Musk paid a visit as well, that was just a cherry on top. Uh, in the beginning of the year, we still expected to participate in the SpaceX competition. And after a few months, we noticed that it was quite unlikely that it would still uh, continue. So we had to find something else. We uh, started setting up the European Hyperloop Week. In uh, Valencia, in the European Hyperloop Week, we uh, took home three prizes. So the first one was the Mechanical Subsystem Award. Uh, also, we did quite some extensive research on the uh, scalability of the full-scale Hyperloop. So what does the future Hyperloop look like? Uh, we got the first prize in that as well. Uh, in the end of the overall competition, we achieved the Jury's Choice Award. Yeah, so it was a home game, so that already makes it a lot more exciting. Friends, family, partners, they can all come and see what we've been working so hard on for a whole year. And I think the build up to it, huge ups and downs. We were working really hard. We had issues up until days before the competition, working through the night to solve the issues sometimes not even knowing what the issues are, but we pulled through and we managed to fix it just in time, working through to the early hours of the morning and to see that pod run on the track, work and win the competition was one of the most exhilarating experiences that I've ever had. Helios 2 was the first prototype by Delft Hyperloop um, that was able to perform zero current full levitation. Uh, and also we were the first to implement a thermal management system which could perform in vacuum environment conditions. And we also developed a new type of linear magnetic motor uh, which could reach incredible efficiencies uh, whilst it also allowed for the, the full infrastructure to be super simple and therefore very scalable. What about the hybrid concept inspired? What really inspires me about the Hyperloop concept is the enormous amount of impact that it can create for society. 
Uh, throughout the history of humanity, people always wanted to travel further and faster. We've had uh, trains, cars, airplanes, but they're now at their limits. So we really need a new type of transportation that can travel in a sustainable way at a high speed. And that's really where Hyperloop comes into place. I think of, for example, about the whole Hyperloop network in Europe. You can basically travel over the whole continent as if it is one sustainable metropolis. So throughout one Hyperloop tube, you can travel as much people that would normally go uh, on a six lane highway. I think the Hyperloop concept is unique in the sense that it doesn't compromise between safety, sustainability, speed and comfort to get from one place to the other. It has the potential to create a sustainable mode of transport, but also impact people's lives. I think for everyone in, involved in Delft Hyperloop, that's probably the, the thing that drives them to work with the team every day. What inspires me about the Hyperloop is the idealism of it. It's about not making concessions. It's about using innovation to deal with some of the most pressing challenges we have as a society and using technology to, for example, make sure that we don't have to sacrifice between sustainability, speed and comfort, but saying we can have it all and we can win and we can create new solutions to connect our society further and deal with the challenges we're facing. How would you describe your year of one word? Focus. I think that if you truly focus onto something and if you put your mind to something, you can do remarkable things. An adventure. Yeah, lots of ups, some downs, uh, lots of lessons learned. Uh, really exciting, but uh, overall just uh, quite a crazy uh, adventure. Amazing. The fact that you set a goal with your team in a really short amount of time. And then if it comes to fruition with actually achieving the goal that you set yourself for, which in our fact was to win the first edition of the competition. That's just an amazing feeling. Unexpected. We faced a few unexpected challenges, um, but we all managed to, to face them quite well, I think. But uh, to say we had a few turns that we didn't expect was uh, the least you could say. Incredible, I think this is what comes to my mind. It's a bit of a, a joke because um, during our design review, our chief engineer said incredible in a very funny way. So it's just a word that we have been saying all year. What are you most proud of? When we started in the first year, Hyperloop was really not known. So it was a very new concept to set it all up, uh, arouse so much mm, attention being able to rally up such a huge amount of partners to help us with building the Hyperloop vehicle that eventually led to the victory in that first edition of the competition. Everybody really worked their ass off basically day and night, uh, weekends, you know how these things uh, go. It's really, that's really something to be very proud of. I'm most proud of the fact that we were able to go from individuals with little to no practical engineering experience to a full team who really pushed the limits of technology. I think I'm most proud that everyone showed up with a really selfless attitude every day, always contributing to something greater than themselves consistently, even when it wasn't going well, even when people were finding it tough. And I think that's really, really inspirational to be able to do that for a full year. What have you learned during the Hyperloop year? What I really learned during my Delft Hyperloop year is that high risk can definitely yield high rewards. I think that's also the essence of a Delft Hyperloop year is that you dare to be ambitious and set the bar high, even if that means doing things for the very first time. For sure, that will mean that you have a lot of obstacles that will come along your way. Um, but with a resilient teamwork and with a team that shares a passion and if you share a vision together, uh, you can turn all of those uh, obstacles or challenges into opportunities. If you focus and if you put your mind to something, you can truly do extraordinary things and uh, the impossible can be made possible. How would you uh, describe it to the world? I think the best word to describe the team in our year is persistent. It's not one word, but uh, I would describe my team with make it work. I would describe the team in one word as selfless. Extremely passionate. I would say driven. It would be powerful. I would say resilient. We would describe the team in one word as being extremely ambitious. Looking at the challenges we want to face as a team together, 
There are extremely big challenges in the development of Hyperloop industry and uh, we have determined that we want to face these challenges this year with the team. And uh, yeah, really proud that the team wants to over overcome these challenges.